Hello everyone, Alex and Rhea Crouch here with you. With <laughs> great way to start. We're back with another Black Butler podcast, and in this particular podcast, we're going to be talking about how we would um, develop new anime adaptations for the as of yet unanimated, if that's a word, unanimated um, manga arcs. Sound good? Yep. Because, uh, you know, we thought, why not? Cause <laughs> there's, there's, a so lot, there's a lot of material. Yeah, definitely. And uh, some of the best storylines haven't been animated yet, I think I can safely claim. Yeah, warning, spoilers. Yeah, there will be there will be some spoilers, quite a lot of spoilers if you only do the anime. But we'll um we'll cut in the first half of this podcast we'll cover stuff that has already been animated, then we'll put up a massive spoiler alert for stuff that hasn't been animated. Yeah. But we're going to start with saying what the first season consisted of, which was twenty four episodes which adapted the Black Butler arc where we got to know all of the main characters in the Phantom Hive household. The from the crazy to the spooky And everything in between. <laughs> then we had the Red Butler slash Jack the Ripper arc, depending on whatever you wanted to call it, where we see more characters, we see Grail, we see what the Grim Reapers are, etc. Um, then it goes on to the Indian Butler slash Curry Contest arc, where you know, we meet Simon and Agni and such. Isn't that when it starts to slowly go away from the manga? Yeah, after that it's all non-canon until the end of the first season and include which includes would you say that the hamlet ova is non-canon i'd possibly say that it is uh yeah because there's no manga and material there's non-canon characters in it and such yeah uh second season is all non-canon 12 episodes of non-canon goodness i like it i will defend it it gets a lot of hate that i think is unjustified whether that hate is genuine or not, I don't know, because I have an inability to know when people are taking the mickey or not. <laughs> but you, you meet a load of nice characters. I mean, that's... Nice is one way of putting it. Well, well, interesting, okay? Yeah. Then you get half a dozen OVAs, which are fantastic, and you could probably say that at least one of them is canon, which is um, the tale of Will the Grim Reaper. Because it has canonical characters in it, and it's set way before the events of the series itself actually begin with, you know, C.O. and Sebastian and all that. Yeah, and a f many chapters later in the manga, Grail makes a reference to it. Bingo! Although I can't remember that off the top of my head at the moment. Well, we get to our point here. You're going to have to help me out there. Third season, ten episodes we're back on track in the manga, as I say, 10 episodes, which adapts the Circus arc into Black Butler, the Book of Circus, which was about right, because 12 episodes may have pushed it a little bit. 10, well, uncommon for, you know, anime series lengths is a nice round number. Yeah, beginning, middle, end. Um, <laughs> fourth season, if indeed you classify this as a fourth season, with... Just it being two one-hour OVAs, the Phantom Hive Man of Murders arc got adapted into the Book of Murder. The the two one-hour long OVAs worked. It would if it was a two-hour film, it would have been a bit of a long sit. And you know, there's a decent intermission, as you will, halfway in yeah. between. It, it's like Sherlock episodes, exactly, or an episode of Midsummer Murders, and the. OVA format for this works because it's it's a bottle plot line. It the virtually the entire plot, or definitely the entire plot, am I right? Takes place within the Phantom Hive Manor. Yeah, it works. It works. <laughs> um, uh, fifth season question mark if you want to call it that again. The <laughs> Feature film theatrical release of the Luxury Ina slash Campania arc um, for the Book of the Atlantic film, which came out at the beginning of 2017. I believe it's just about to be released on DVD in the States. 
and all of Region 1, which I believe is just the States and Canada, but I could be wrong. Um, I believe that's coming out imminently, hence why we're kind of doing this. Timing! Uh, so, not seen it yet, but that's... I've, you know... We've read we've, the we've, manga. We've, we... read, we've read the manga. Um, the feature film for the um, luxury liner arc definitely works. OVAs, I don't think we've been able to do the storyline justice because, yes, I know what I say about a bottle working for the OVAs, mm -hmm. but this was so Titanic themed. <laughs> and of course, it was the, you know, Titanic, you know, it's the second highest grossing film of all time, even though I've not seen it because I just want to see it sink. We know what happens. Um, I've lost my train of thought here. It works because it's really based off something that's worked so well before. Of course, I'm saying this without actually having seen the film, <laughs> but you know when you've seen the adaptations of Circus and Murder, you don't need to worry so much about that. I don't think. And the, I think the difference between the Book of Murder and the Book of Atlantis, one being an OVA, because with murder storylines you build up to another reveal that deepens the plot, whereas with the Book of the Atlantic, everything was being thrown at them so fast they had to keep fast paced. Mm. You wouldn't have been able to do that with breaking up into episodes. Mm. Definitely. Right, so that's what's already been um, adapted, covered. Now, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. We're going to go into uncharted territory if you only follow the anime adaptations of Black Butler. And also, if you're not completely caught up with the manga, we are going all the way up to the present day, which is early June 2018 when we're recording this. Spoilers, you have been warned. I'm not going to warn you again. <laughs> we will now talk about how we would produce the anime adaptation of the public school Western College arc, which... I don't know about you, is my personal favourite. Because you're a cricket fan. Yeah, I want I want them to I want I want a cricket anime and this is the as close as I feel I'm going to get. Um I'd also can't wait to pick apart some of the mistakes that were made. Yes, I know I have seen that little comic that Yana Toboso did about learning aspects of the game, but still cut I I'm cringing oh, at some of it for the 129th time it was the manga was probably written or should i say dubbed or however you describe translation mangas scanlations i think yeah uh, well it was probably done by americans and uh, no offense who probably didn't know the points in cricket are called runs give them a little leeway all right, all right, all right. But also, why the hell is um, Greenhill batting so far down the order when he's the best batsman? I don't get it. And what's with that? What's with that shot where he holds the bat over his head? Autistic license. It's not cricket. You're complaining about this when there are demons in this world. Yeah, and Grim Reapers and all that supernatural stuff. Yeah, okay, I'll let you. Oh, fine, whatever. Let's anyway. <laughs> I win. Public school arc. We would. Well, I certainly don't know about you. I'd do you know the the tried and trusted high school format of twelve episodes followed by the OVA where they all go shopping in like where the Phantom Hive um, household, you know, Ciel, Sebastian, Finny, Mayrin, Bard, and Snake all go shopping. Yeah, I just want it for the colours. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, so it's the tried and trusted format. You can have cliffhanger endings at the end of several of the episodes. And the episode format, I feel, will give more time to introduce and use some really colourful and very popular new characters. So, you know, Edward, we've already got, but then you've got Cheswick, you've got Clayton, um, you've got the P4, uh, Lawrence Bluer, Edgar Redman, Herman Greenhill and Gregory Violet. Uh, Maurice Cole for what he's worth, Johan Harcourt, the just a great group of characters that need <laughs> to be animated to do them justice. And if it also links on to the book of Atlantis. Atlantic. Atlantic. I, I can't talk. Uh, it's twice you've said Atlantis now. I don't think they're going to quite do that. <laughs> I, I'm 
I'm, I'm, I'm not good with words. That and I just want to see an English public school in the anime world. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after the public school arc, I believe we've touched on all we're going to do for that. Mm -hmm. um, the Emerald Witch or Green Witch arc, depending on what you want to call it. This one gave me a bit of trouble thinking about it. Is when I was reading it, I didn't feel that you know your standard twelve or thirteen episode series would work. So I've kind of gone with three OVAs. Reason why I've gone for three is because there's clearly, in my mind, three different parts of the Emerald Witch arc. The first OVA would be um, the Phantom High family, not Phantom High <laughs> family. Phantom Hive household, uh, travelling to Germany, meeting Sieglin, and Wolfram and the other villagers, and would finish when Ciel and Sebastian are stricken with this curse that makes them all horrible looking and such. The second OVA would deal with Ciel's hallucinations and recovery, and, you know, some, you know Sebastian snooping around and stuff. Yeah. The third OVA would be when everybody is running through the forest trying to get back to England or preventing the main cast and Siegel getting back or getting to England. You know, that that, that was very um, Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes, that big chase <laughs> through the forest. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, I haven't got your opinions on public school or Emerald Witch. How would you do it? Uh, I, I think it, because we've, well, the public school arc, it's all different storylines sewn together. Yeah, hence the episode thing yeah, works. So, uh, I don't know, you're pretty on the ball with that one. Boom. <laughs> uh, Emerald Witch. I think it works because it's basically segment, segmented into those three bits. Is that a word? Segmented. Segmented. I think so. Segmentated, so cool. Anyway. <laughs> Can uh, you tell which one of us is dyslexic? <laughs> That's harsh. Um, now, we get up to what I suppose is still technically the arc which we're on. Although you say otherwise. We'll get to that, which is the Blue Coal or Blue Star arc. That's my phone, I've got a text. Um, <laughs> Blue Coal or Blue Star arc. Um, I'm not sure how many episodes we'd be able to squeeze out of it at the moment. I think episodes would be the way to go up until a point. Because you, again, have cliffhanger endings. The plot is very in-depth in places. I feel like many scenes would be cut. Because um... I don't think many bits would be necessary. Well, it depends, you know, whether you want to literally animate panel for panel, but I don't believe that's what is usually done. Um, and yeah, the uh, the Battle of the Boy Bands would need at least a week or two on the internet to break it. <laughs> I, I, I was, I, yeah, I, I, I suspend a lot of my disbelief with Black Butler, particularly when it comes to cricket. But the Boy Bands thing was hysterical. <laughs> And so out of place. But then, as you say, you know, you've got werewolves and demons and grim reapers and all that good supernatural stuff. Of course, they'd have boy bands in late 19th century London. Uh, I just, that looked like Judas Priest. <laughs> I just find it funny that they were bringing in technologies such as microphones. Well, Siegel is a genius. And, and glow sticks and... Come on, can we just admit that... They have tanks in the previous yeah. arc. Can, can we just admit that their bunny plushies are cute? Yeah, I'm not disputing that in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Especially what Edward does with them at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky fangirl. So, episodes up until a point, and that point is in chapter 126... When Prince Soma and Agni are in the bay window of the townhouse. And you just know something bad is about to happen. This is, from that moment, for me, is the end of the Blue Cult arc. 
it is the start of and uh, now spoiler 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 Hang on, before you do that can i just go back onto the grim reaper thing that i pointed out earlier oh yeah sure go on we meet another Grim Reaper called a fellow, I believe. Yeah, a fellow. Yeah, it's not and, he, his and he shows the training scythe, which Grell and William had in the OVA. Bingo! And, oh yeah, because he doesn't really he doesn't really do collections, does yeah, he? Yeah, and Grell says that takes me back. You know what? I forgot that. I remember these things. Mm, someone's got to. <laughs> So yeah, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. But then you know it's been out for you know practically a year now. For me, with Simon and Agni at the bay window in the townhouse, it is the start of the Phantom Hive twin arc. We were led up the garden path, and we found Narnia. It's <laughs> <laughs> one way of putting it. The twin arc, which is still ongoing, right up to the present day when we're recording this. Yep. It needs its own standalone release. Even if that means breaking the Blue Cult um, series, hypothetical series up, it needs its own standalone OVA or theatrical film. Yeah. Depending on how gory you want to get with some of the details, it may have to be a film. Because even if an OVA, some of the scenes in it are pretty brutal, to be honest. Are we t talking Helsing Ultimate Brutal? Yes. Um, you know, it's one of the very few times I've been reading manga or, you know, watching or reading anything that is really, really genuinely upset me was uh, some of the stuff that you see occurring in the twin arc and I'm not going to go into the details of it but so going through the series you kind of could see it coming uh, but such an earth shattering reveal that was real CL being confirmed and which we'll touch on in our next podcast subsequently, many of the fan theories being confirmed, such an earth-shattering reveal needs its own entity. Yeah, because it's because at the moment, since that reveal, all the characters have been in one spot. Yeah, they're still on the... I think this has actually been corrected in the official volume release. They're so still on the 15th of November, 1889. We've been on that day in the manga for over a year in our time now but the flashbacks go to when they're five or when they're seven to their 10th birthday and onwards yeah so and you know it gives it gives us a bit more time to see you know vincent and rachel animated and we need as much interaction between the twins as possible Basically, the the tw you could, if it wasn't for the twin reveal, you could probably have got away with not animating Public School, Emerald Witch, and Blue Cult. Yeah, because at the moment they've all got something after the. Well, from the from, I think I know what you're going to say. From the Book of the Atlantic and... onwards, it is all linked because you've got. The original Bizarre Dolls in the Book of the Atlantic. Yeah. You've got more characters coming back to life briefly as more advanced Bizarre Dolls in the Western College arc. Um, you see Undertaker going on about stuff connected with them in the Emerald Witch arc, as far as I can remember. To, you know, the, the, the blood samples has obviously got to be something to do with the Bizarre Dolls. And you see real CL in the blue cult arc you know waking up and such they're all connected from where we are at now release wise onwards anime release wise onwards they're all connected they need to be animated if you know you've got the studio and you've got the budget and you can do it and you can get the voice actors and they're not doing something else exactly we're asking a lot <laughs> we are asking a hell of a lot and you know this is purely what we would do this is not confirming anything in any way this is all hypothetical. I just do not take what we are saying as gospel. This is purely <laughs> what we would do if we had unlimited time and resources. Yeah. 
Uh, anyway, rant's over. I think that's about it. Yeah. All I know is that it's going to take me a while to edit this together, but you know. And it would be on a note we haven't, well, we've sort of missed somehow, and I don't know how. How cool would it be to see Brava animated? Yeah, <laughs> notable by his absence so far. But anyway, we will probably get onto that in another Black Butler podcast. So, um, that's all from us at the moment. We will talk with you, at you, you will listen to us, or whatever it is you do with these, <laughs> in the next one. So, this is Alex and Ria saying um, cheerio, and we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.